Hello, my name is Ken Jones. I'm a professor in the History Department. As the recipient of the 2020 Sister Mary Grell and Robert Spaeth Teacher of Distinction Award, I have been asked to welcome you. To those of you who are new to these campuses, I hope that they gradually come to feel like home to you, as they have for me. To all of you who are returning, let's remember the Benedictine emphasis on community, including the need to welcome the stranger. This will feel different in the COVID-19 world of masks and social distancing, but we can do it. I have four pieces of advice for you today, or four wishes. The first is that you practice adaptability. I'm sad that I'm not going to experience the close personal interaction in the classroom that so delights me, but it isn't going to do me any good or do my students any good if I stay focused on what's missing. Instead, we need to put all of our energy into adapting, finding new ways to create what we need. Faculty have been working hard to do that over the summer and will need your willingness to adapt as we go forward. I'd also suggest to you that developing your ability to adapt is going to be critical way beyond this COVID moment. The world is changing so fast that futurists suggest that you will have many different jobs over your working life. If you can adapt, you should be fine. A liberal arts education helps with this. Specific technical knowledge can be valuable one moment and worthless the next. What doesn't become obsolete is the liberal arts emphasis on the ability to think, the ability to communicate, and the ability to learn on your own. Smart people with those skills will always be in demand. My second wish for you is that you develop your capacity for resilience or perseverance. By that, I mean the ability to bounce back when life throws you a curve and the willingness to keep going even when the task is hard and you're frustrated. Trying to learn new teaching tools has certainly reminded me of the importance of this capacity. One thing that's helped me is the realization that I need to redefine how I think of success. Instead of thinking of success as something that I can do easily, it seems to me that I should look at success as something that involves striving. It's about having the courage and the dedication, the perseverance, if you will, to get better at something that's hard. I teach a course on sport and society in recent US history, so I read a lot of sports stuff. And when the last dance series on the end of Michael Jordan's NBA career was on TV, uh, I saw one columnist who pointed out that Jordan, who is arguably the best basketball player ever, missed more than 9,000 shots in his career, and 26 of those were end-of-the-game misses that meant defeat for his team when he missed the shot. Jordan was the best player around maybe ever, but he certainly knew failure, and that drove him to work even harder. Now, I think that Jordan's need to win was over the top. It alienated some of his teammates, but my wish for you is that when things are hard or frustrating, you remember that even superstars experience failure and they keep going. As we move forward, pick up the challenge of getting better. Spend a few more minutes, review the material, ask for help. Please, please do not just decide that it's too hard and quit. Okay, so my first two wishes for you are that you cultivate the traits of adaptability and perseverance. If we can do this together, we will turn an unsettling situation into a positive experience and you will have strengths that will help you throughout your life. My third wish for you is that the choices you make reflect the values of the person you want to be. For those of you who are nearing graduation, I'm sure you're thinking about how to make a living. Uh, that's always part of growing up, but I'm sorry that you have to start out in this environment. Given the situation, at first you probably are going to need to take any job you can get. But please don't permanently settle into something that doesn't bring you joy. Keep looking for work that fits who you want to be and provides a reward beyond the paycheck. My dad's line on this was that, quote, it isn't much of a life if all you care about is payday and quitting time. I listened to that advice and I got lucky. It meant I wasn't there to take over the family business, but I've been blessed to do a job that brings me joy every day. Going a little bit deeper, I hope that you devote some thought to who you want to be rather than what you want to be. Think about questions like this. What are my values? How do I want to live my life? What really matters to me? These questions are a critical part of growing up, critical part of becoming an adult, and I think they are facilitated by the liberal arts environment. 
make use of this opportunity in your life to do that reflection. In my experience, as day-to-day -day life happens, as you get more and more things on your plate, it's easy to lose sight of that person that you wanted to be. Occasional self-reflection can help. But beyond that, I'd encourage you to look for people right now who strengthen that aspirational part of you. It can be family, it can be a partner, it can be friends, whatever. Hang on to those people. If you can, if you can bring them into your reflection on what a good life looks like, then that conversation will be deeper and more honest. And I firmly believe you will do more of what you really want to do. My last wish for you is that you use your talents to provide leadership in shaping the world you have inherited. Yes, I, I just said shape the world. Uh, I imagine some of you are rolling your eyes at that. You're thinking I'm too young or too insignificant to shape the world. Or you're thinking, yeah, it's screwed up, but that's just the way it is and things don't change and it's a waste of time. I'm not gonna get into that. My response to that is two words, John Lewis or three. Congressman John Lewis. I expect quite a few of you know him uh, because he's the guy who just died and got quite the send off. Can you imagine three presidents speaking at your funeral? Wow. For those of you who don't know him, check with our friend Google. John Lewis knew a lot about leading at a young age. He was involved in sit-ins to challenge segregation in restaurants when he was a first year college student and ended up in jail. This is him on the far left. By the time he was 23, he was one of six speakers at the March on Washington, appearing just before Martin Luther King delivered his I Have a Dream. This is Lewis speaking, and then Martin Luther King speaking to 250,000 people. Can you imagine being the warm-up act for that? No pressure there at all. John Lewis also knew the cost of standing up. During the Freedom Rides in 1961, he just missed being on this bus that was trying to get enforcement of a federal law. He was then severely beaten three times in less than a month. This is John Lewis on the left uh, and a fellow freedom writer on the right. And you can see the bandages on John Lewis's head in this one. Uh, he's on his way to Mississippi's most notorious prison, Parchment Farm at this point, uh, for doing something that the Supreme Court said he had a right to do. By the end of his life, he'd been arrested uh, over 40 times for civil disobedience and various protests. In 1965, he was almost killed by police during a march on Selma that I imagine some of you have seen in the film Selma. Uh, this is Stephen James uh, in John Lewis's role, a little taller than John Lewis, but he's still got the white coat and the backpack. They came down over the bridge and ran into the state troopers, uh, telling them to stop. And while they're stopped there, these guys, the state troopers, are ordered forward uh, with gas masks and tear gas and batons, and they proceed to chase the marchers back across the bridge. The body in the center there uh, in, the in the photo is John Lewis getting hit, uh, and he said that he thought he would be killed. The guy was hitting his skull, uh, but fortunately, this melee of people came in and knocked the sheriff off of Lewis, so he didn't get a good swing on that last round. Now John Lewis and the Civil Rights Movement as a whole made some important advances in the 1960s, uh, but as you know, we haven't overcome racism yet. So John Lewis certainly knew something of disappointment and the need for perseverance. To this point, he said, there may be some setbacks, some delays, some disappointments, but you must never give up or give in. We're not going back, we're going forward, and yet, at the same time, he warned, never become bitter, never become hostile, never hate. John Lewis gave a lot of commencement speeches, and in one uh, close to the end of his career doing that, uh, he talked about the need to address climate change, and then he said to people like you, use your education. Use your education to make our country and our world a great place where no one is left behind. You can do it, you must do it, it is your time. In case you're worried that you won't have the ability to take this on, let me emphasize that preparing you for these tasks is what we are all about here at CSB and SJU. Check out our learning goals. 
Two of the learning goals are to serve graciously and live courageously. Uh, that just matches perfectly with John Lewis's life. We also ask you to think deeply about your views on things like justice and the common good and social responsibility. That's engagement. And we call on you to embrace difference by honing your ability to learn from, respect, and work with people whose identity and perspective are different from your own. And finally, your work in all of these areas rests upon your ability to think deeply, meaning bringing your critical thinking skills, your capacity to look at things from multiple perspectives to the task of tackling really big issues. My point is that you will have the toolkit that you need to be the quote, ordinary people with extraordinary vision that John Lewis said created change. Preparation is great, but action is needed. John Lewis's injunction was that each person should quote, do as much as you can, as often as you can. You can do this in small ways. Start with the people that you interact with. Do you treat them all with respect? Do you demonstrate that respect by actually listening to them and engaging their ideas? That's a start, but you have the capacity to do more. Reflect on your values and let them shape the role you play in your neighborhood, in your church, in the local schools when you're older, in the larger community. Where will you give money? Where will you give of your talents and time? And if I can channel John Lewis one more time, remember his words that, quote, the vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent we have in a democracy. So vote, and don't you dare say that it doesn't matter. Bless you, stay safe, be adaptable, persevere, discover what matters to you, and go out and make this a better world. Thank you.